Meeting call to order. <coughs> Councilmember Buzz Anderson. Here. Councilmember Chapman. Here. Councilmember Clayton. Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Here. Mayor Moore. Here. Please stand for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection. We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 22, 2024, and posted on the bolted board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. To matters from city council, council member Buzz Anderson. And just a good evening to all of you and wishing you all a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Council Member Chapman. Yes, I'd also like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and to acknowledge all of the organizations and volunteers that help provide Thanksgiving meals for our residents. And as we get further into the holiday season, I want to remind everyone that the Asbury Park Toy Drive serves over 800 families and there are drop boxes around the city, including City Hall. So if you can donate a toy or some financial contributions, please consider it as we go into the holiday season. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton. Uh -huh. Just a happy and safe Thanksgiving to you and your families. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Quinn. No, Thank you. Mayor Moore. Just the same thing. Happy, healthy Thanksgiving holiday to all. If anybody's traveling, be careful. Thank you. Thank you. Matters from the Nothing. deputy city manager? You. Matters from the sit in for the city attorney? Okay. <laughs> Nothing here. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, we're now going to do a presentation by APW Developer LLC for a redevelopment project located at 1001 Ocean Avenue, 105 Third Avenue, and 105 Second Avenue. Jan Smith. Good evening, everyone, and happy Thanksgiving to all. My name is Jennifer Phillips Smith, and we are here tonight on, on behalf of APW Redeveloper LLC, which is an affiliate of the Master Developer Asbury Partners for the Asbury Park Waterfront Redevelopment Area. Tonight's presentation concerns Block 4004, Lots 1, 2, and 3, which is a lot that is bordered by Kingsley, 2nd, 3rd, and Ocean. As you'll hear tonight, the proposal concerns a two-phase project with one phase having 44 townhomes and the other being a mixed-use building along Ocean Avenue. Our presentation tonight will start with John Barry, our planner, and then we'll move on to Lena Barone, uh, Jeremy Green, and Frank Minervini, who will each go through and talk about the civil engineering and then the architecture. So we'll start with John. Good evening, everyone. Uh, John Barry with Higher Grown Associates, professional planner. Uh, nice to see you all. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, so we'll start just to get briefly oriented. We have the aerial exhibit here showing the location of the property as Jennifer described, uh, fronting between Ocean Avenue and Kingsley Street and between 2nd and 3rd Avenues. The lot today is developed as a parking lot, um, looking around the site. That's what you see. You see a, a surface parking lot that um, has you know, frontage on all four streets. The main access point from, from Third Avenue as seen in picture number eight in the top right <coughs> corner, and then another access point on Second Avenue, uh, picture number four. The uh, surrounding properties include the Ocean Club, which is just to the, the north of the subject property. Uh, to the northwest, you've got the surf house building that's under construction. Uh, it's come along a bit since these pictures were taken over the summer. The opposite side of Ocean Avenue in the top left corner, you can see the, the Second Avenue Pavilion and the, uh, the sidewalk along the, the frontage there. To the west of the property at Kingsley and Third, um, you've got uh, vacant and developable sites. And southwest of the subject property, you've got uh, Porta the, and just to the, the south of the block, you have the Stone Pony site. 
A uh, couple uh, pictures of other buildings in the area that everybody's certainly very familiar with. Um, these will be relevant in terms of some of the architectural discussion that, that we have presented later on with uh, the Paramount Theater Convention Hall building with some of the, the features that may be echoed in, in the architecture you'll see later on. And then the Fifth Avenue Pavilion that has examples of raised walkways that provide access. Um, and we have similar, some dissimilar design features that we'll be discussing later on. So as far as the, the project that you'll hear about, we've got a subdivision to create two lots. The lot that'll be located along the Ocean Avenue frontage would have a mixed use building with commercial space as is recommended in the waterfront redevelopment plan with some units upstairs. The um, remainder of the block will have a, a townhouse development that has a central spine access from Kingsley Street that will provide um, access to the, the parking garage, the garages of the townhouse units. The, plan, the, the plans that are being presented this evening comply in terms of the lot area, lot width requirements in the redevelopment plan. The height is proposed uh, two, two feet, two stories rather, um, for the mixed use building with a penthouse and then four stories for the townhouse buildings. Those heights comply with what's required and permitted in the redevelopment plan. The, so, broadly speaking, we have a, a compliant application. There are some design exceptions that were noted in the Technical Review Committee's report. Uh, I just want to bring attention to, to two items that we believe may not apply. There was a note about requiring landscaping for parking lot planted islands and minimum parking lot planted area. The parking that's proposed here is really driveways and garages. We don't have a parking lot with 20 or more spaces, which is what kicks those requirements into effect under the redevelopment plan. So we believe that those particular waivers don't apply to this application and would reserve the right to, um, you know, when we present to the planning board, not have those considered. Okay. That's it. All right. So with that, I'd like to move on to our civil engineer, Elena Barone. Good evening. Thank you. All right. Well, if you would introduce yourself for the record and then tell us a little bit about the existing conditions and some of the challenges with designing this site. Yes. My name is Lena Balorda Barone. I'm a um, senior project manager for French and Perola Associates, and I'm the engineer of record for this project. Bearings, okay. So what I'm showing you is the uh, site and layout plan that shows the proposed development. As you've heard from Mr. Barry, um, we have met with the uh, city professionals before about this project that is the development of block 4004. Currently it consists of three lots. Those lots would be subdivided into two. One lot, lot A, would have uh, building A on it, which is the mixed-use building fronting Ocean Avenue. Lot B would have the remainder of the property that fronts on Kingsley Street, as well as 2nd and 3rd Avenues. Um, the proposed subdivision is a compliant subdivision. Uh, the lot areas and uh, lot widths comply with what's required by the redevelopment plan. We are proposing 44 townhome units total in those two buildings and three residential units in building A with approximately 4,413 square feet of retail space. The project will be developed in two phases. Phase one consists of the townhome development with a um, subdivision line near this parking lot. And then phase two, once the townhomes are completed, then the mixed-use building would be developed. By phasing it that way, that allows for some of the construction phasing to occur on the site, correct? That's correct. We are proposing a vehicular access off of Kingsley Street. This would provide access for parking for the townhomes, as well as access to the Building A garages, as well as two surface parking spaces. There would be cross-access easements for these two properties, and those would be recorded. As far as pedestrian circulation, um, access to Building A, to the retail building, we are proposing three points of access. 
um, you will see the architecture and how the ADA accessible ramps and stairs are configured, but there are three points of access along the frontage. Also for buildings B and C, the townhomes, we're proposing three points of access for each one of those buildings. We are proposing elevated walkways as a result of the um, new flood hazard rules that were adopted in 2023. The flood hazard elevation has been raised by three feet, so that was one of the challenges that we had to work through and come up with a design that meets the redevelopment standards as well as the new flood hazard rules. Um, so you will see in the architectural drawings later on that these access points provide sufficient um, interaction with the streetscape and provide for accessible access as well as stairs. As far as parking for this development, we are required to provide 71 on-site parking spaces. We will be providing 98 off-street <coughs> parking spaces, 88 for the use by the 44 townhomes, which is a combination of driveways and garage parking, 10 for the use by the mixed-use building which has the three residential units. We will be providing EV parking for the townhomes in their garages where all the units will be make ready units. And we're also gonna provide bicycle parking inside of the garages in the townhomes and there will be racks inside the dwelling units in building A. I also wanna point out that as part of the reconfiguration of the access, because the uh, existing site is a parking lot and has access points already, which we will be reconfiguring, we're going to increase the on-street parking by nine parking spaces. So there will be actually an increase in available on-street parking. Also as far as utilities, we're proposing utility meters to be um, facing internally so that they will not be visible from the public roads. Excellent. So, in summary, the project complies with the redevelopment bulk requirements uh, from a site perspective. We exceed the on-site parking requirements and also create nine additional on-street parking spaces. Great. So with that, I'd like to turn to architecture. We have two architects for the project, so I'll start with Jeremy Green, who will do the townhome architecture, and then we'll bring up Frank afterwards to talk about the mixed-use building. Good evening, happy holidays. My name is Jeremy Green. I serve as a division architect for the New Jersey Home Building Operations Team, overseeing all of the development work in the state. I'm a registered architect in New Jersey. How do we advance? Other way. Other way? Um, I'll just pick up on what the uh, engineer uh, explained. So as you can see, we have uh, <clears throat> two buildings on 2nd um, and 3rd Avenues, each having 22 dwelling units. They're essentially set up in um, 11 modules, so there's two dwelling, multifamily dwelling units per module. Both uh, those units <clears throat> are accessed off the elevated walkway. Uh, there are ramps to the east and the west and there's a stair uh, generally in the middle the to the elevated walkway. And as was explained, the walkway is elevated for flood uh, compliance as well as the lower level units needing to be um, accessible. Um, the units along 2nd and 3rd Avenue are three-story units with a loft and a roof terrace that overlooks the street. Uh, the units in the rear, the four-story four -story units with a roof terrace on the uppermost level that you see there. So uh, the idea is that everybody gets a view. Um, capitalizing on the location. Um, the units are around 23, 2400 square feet each. And as was mentioned, there are two parking spaces, one in the garage behind off the alleyway and one in a parking spot off the alleyway. 
Uh, the buildings are, are nearly identical <coughs> off of the two streets, as you can see for thir Second and Third Avenue. Um, we also have our, our alleyway architecture as well, which is um, you know compliant all around. Um, you know, we don't change any materials; it's all the same materials on each side of the buildings, uh, so that we have um, nice views um, to adjacent buildings. This is the elevation along uh, Kingsley Street. This is our high visib visibility elevation where we enter the site off of Kingsley, and we would have our, our um, signage uh, to demarking the buildings. Um, I'm going to jump ahead just to show you. Um, we have our material palette. Generally, it's um, brick and uh, cementitious panel of a variety of different configurations. And we had some nice renderings prepared for this presentation. This is the rendering showing you from uh, Second and Kingsley, uh, looking down past uh, to the to the north, I believe. Uh, and that shows you along this area here, we have this elevated walkway that which you enter um, off of here. You have your uh, fire service room. Um, you have your elevated walkway, your stair down here. And as you can see, this is the rear adjacency to the building A that will be spoken about next. And then we have one more uh, rendering that we prepared looking from the opposite corner from third along Kingsley. Again, showing very similar configuration changes in the color schemes with uh, generally um, you can see the landscaping that's brought along the edge to you know, soften up the this, this street edge and that sort of thing. Now following the TRC meeting that we had back in August, you made some revisions to the plans. Can you briefly summarize some of those sure. revisions? So we were asked to enhance the elevation slightly um, so along 2nd and 3rd avenues, we did um, make some enhancements to the lower level, just lining them up uh, based upon some of the feedback that we got from the planner just to give them a little bit of a better balance. Um, along Kingsley, and I'll flip back to this one because I think this is a little easier to see, um, we were asked to um, increase the, the percentage of fenestration as well as the architectural detailing. So. We actually had this bay just off of uh, third Ave Second and Third Avenue. We actually had that turn the corner to create um, this this you know nice element. We also added an additional bay here as well as three windows, two at the lower level and one at the first floor, to increase the fenestration ratio along that side. Um, along the alleyway elevations, which I won't pan back to, we did actually add uh, some trim features um, at the first and third level as well as this paneled approach, as you can see wraps now around the entire alleyway, which we thought was a nice, a nice enhancement. Um, and then the elevations um, at the other end of the building pretty much did the same thing that faced the rear of the mixed unit building as we did along Kingsley Avenue to a certain degree. Okay. And then I know that obviously some of the sustainability features will come together once you have construction drawings, but what are some of the things you're thinking about as sustainability features for the townhomes? Yeah, one of the unique things about the way um, our company builds is we have a truss and panel and uh, fabrication plant in Morrisville, Pennsylvania. So we're able to capitalize on being able to panelize the walls, um, the floor systems, and bring those out with very little waste uh, and very uh, minimal transportation from Morrisville. Um, so that really cuts down on the, the transportation, fuel impact, pollution, and the prefabrication, again, reduces the on-site um, waste and need for recycling and or disposing of that, um, you know, that extra material. Um, we also um, recently, about a year and a half ago, began um, doing all of our energy compliance in the state of New Jersey through the New Jersey Clean Energy Program, which is essentially Energy Star. Um, so what that includes are high efficiency windows, uh, eco-friendly insulation, usually spray from to reduce uh, envelope leakage, high efficiency heating and cooling systems, um, high efficiency tankless water heaters with recirculating features. And again, this cuts down on the energy consumption, uh, high efficiency energy star appliances and 100% LED lighting. Um, by that account, uh, generally these homes deliver about 30% uh, better energy efficient than a traditional home. Wonderful. That's all I have for Mr. Green. I would ask uh, Mr. Minervini to come on up and talk about the mixed-use building along Ocean Avenue. Well, can I ask questions on that one before we oh. move to the other oh, one? Oh, absolutely. 
so the take me through the color palette. Okay. And I don't love it. So let me start with that. Okay, so uh, generally we, we have like an earthier tone with grays and whites. Um, so we have two, we're proposing two different brick colors along the base as well as um, a series of different um, door colors to kind of give this playful um, you know, rhythm along the street. Um, we, this is something we proposed for the, uh, the block on, on Cookman Avenue that we're de currently developing. Um, and we, that was an idea that came through from the previous TRCA um, interaction with that team. And we felt that we wanted to carry that theme over. Um, then we get into the rest of the uh, <coughs> siding materials would be a mix of panelized um, and, uh, you know, uh, sorry, cementitious panels. Try to get, spit that one out. Um, in a variety of different colors, we have cobblestone um, that comes down and mixes in with an Arctic white. Um, we also have that Arctic white as your backdrop into the aged pewter at the base. So this is going like around a ton of murals and just a, a, a sharp art palette on the boardwalk, right? There's all the pavilions have murals, the sewer plant. So, I mean, listen, I'm one boat, but that's very drab to me. I just think if you're gonna plop this building in the middle of a sort of an artsy area, we could, we could do something other than grays and whites. I like the brick for what that's worth. Yeah. It's a win. I'll take it. Okay. Certainly something we can take into consideration. We usually don't go in with a wild scheme. And but we like we wild. Like wild. Yeah. 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 You're an Asbury pal. I you got to do a little wild. Okay. It's great. Thank you for the feedback. That's it. For me. Anybody else? Nope. Thank you. Right. Okay. Here's hoping. There we go. Yeah. All right. So Frank, I'd ask you to introduce yourself for the record and then tell us about the proposed building on Ocean Avenue. Sure. Um, I am Frank Minervini, principal of M &M K Architecture. We design what we're calling Building A, which is the mixed-use two-story building along Ocean Avenue. So we'll start with our sh first sheet. And I think the architecture in this case is, in terms of aesthetics, as important as the building itself. So our building goes from 2nd Avenue to 3rd Avenue, the full 200 foot width and about 50 feet in depth. So in this dimension, it's 200 feet. In this dimension, about 50 feet. The ground floor, all of this section, is retail use only. That's about 4,400 square feet of retail use. When we say retail, we include any commercial. Could, any commercial could, could that, be restaurant that is, as yeah, well. Yeah, anything that is approved within the, the district. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're prepared for if it is a restaurant, and we're, the chefs and things like that, we'll, we'll be put in, but we'll see where the market takes us. Um, the, in, the architecture itself, I think, is loosely inspired by Asbury Convention Hall. And I think you could see that pretty clearly. We, when I say loosely, we certainly didn't want to replicate it, but we use certain elements of it. And one of the bigger elements, of course, is, is the, the color of the brick, which was revised since the TRC. Initially, this building had a kind of a, a gray color to it. And after some feedback of the TRC, we decided to change it into a more reddish brown, which again is more typical you would see certainly in, in, in Asbury in the convention hall. One of the uh, bigger features in terms of architecture, again, this applies to the floor plan, is what we're calling a gallery. So as you've heard many, many times, all the residential and <clears throat> commercial floors have to be raised up out of the floor plan. In this case, it's about four feet. So the way we handled that in this case was to have an open gallery, which is again, that same elevated um, walkway, but in our case, it's eight feet in width. So it allows for access to all this retail without having to be on the sidewalk. So it's not just a small little walkway that runs adjacent to the retail. It's something much more significant and I think works architecturally. 
Of course, we have ADA access, compliance here, stair entry here, stair entry here, and stair entry on the northern side. So there is multiple points of access to this, to this gallery. Uh, the second floor, and I can go through the floor plans if needed, but the second floor, here's some more renderings. I think it's probably important to talk about this. So here's a view looking southwest. You'll see that that same architecture wrapped around both of the sides, the smaller facades, which this is about 50 feet. Here's a, how we envision the buildings to look in the evening. Um, lighting along these columns. And there's a straight on view in the evening. Ground floor plan. This is Ocean Avenue. This is the sidewalk. And this is that raised walkway, which we're calling the gallery, as I mentioned a couple times. So this is important because it allows access uh, to several points within this retail space. We're not sure yet if this will be one single retail space or two. We're showing it as two. I think we'd like that option, but we'd also like the option for it to be one end user, depending on who that end user, end user is. So to access this, as I mentioned, there's a stair here on the southern side. There's two stairs here, directly center of the building, and again on the northern side. One of the significant changes we made since the TRC, and I'll go back to the rendering, was that there was a comment about the asymmetry of the building. And initially we had this section not exactly centered and that was purposeful. We thought it made it a bit more visually interesting, but we understood the comments, made the revision and ultimately like where we wound up. And then finally on the second floor, again, this building is only two stories. Um, it's got the second floor has three residential units, about 2,200 square feet plus or minus, three units, and then there is a penthouse for each of those units with outdoor terrace that faces east, obviously the views. So these three boxes are habitable space, but they are very small, um, wouldn't count as a floor, even though we are allowed four floors here. So I, I think that's it. Oh, green elements, important to this building, important to almost all the buildings, all the buildings that we do these days. And our construction method is different from the townhomes you, you heard about, but we, at this point, we know for sure that we'll be using, uh, you've heard this many times again, energy star rated appliances, uh, windows, uh, closed cell insulation, which super insulates the walls. Um, we haven't talked much about the stormwater uh, detention, but that is a, a big green factor. I think we don't talk about it because we're also used to it in Asbury. It's, it's, it's part of an all new development. Um, low VOC paints and LED lighting. So those are the ones that we have, that we know for sure at this point, there certainly will be more, but I, I think just given that, we meet far exceed the thresholds that the construction code will require. Excellent. And I think that's it. So this is square footage of the three penthouses. The penthouses themselves are 700. So thank you. Yeah. Each, sorry, not, not totally. Yeah, yeah, we have the little version, so I can't read yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I think that's really interesting. Looks a little like the post office. A bit, a yeah, and that's why I said loosely because I recognize that it's 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 got several elements that could be applied to other buildings. Well, that is all we have for our direct presentation. Obviously, everyone's here to answer questions. I will note that for this project, in a little bit different fashion, we are asking for two subsequent developer agreements, one for each building, so that we can understand the phasing that the townhomes go first, so the construction can be phased in the area um, where the second build or third building would be built, and then the, the Ocean Ave building would be built. They all could be tied together. And we think that will reduce disruption as well by doing some of the construction phasing on the site. That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Questions from any of us? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're now on to public participation. May I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Public participation portion is now open. Any member of the public who wishes to speak, please use the microphone, state your name and address for the record. There will be a three minute time limit for each speaker. Again, your name and full address for the record. Thank you. Hello, Matthew Whalen, Asbury Park Chamber of Commerce, 1011 Main Street. I just wanted to first wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and uh, then just uh, remind everyone that we're doing the window decorating contest 
all over town for businesses. Um, we've had a great response. We've got 20 businesses signed up already. Uh, but we have a lot more businesses in Asbury Park and I want to get as many in as possible. Um, I'd like to thank the city for distributing that as well. Um, Sylvia Sylvia sent that out to the city's list of uh, businesses as well to help get the word out. And that also got me a few more to sign up. So it's looking really good. We got a lot of businesses downtown participating. I'd like to see more on the west side and Main Street. Um, the boardwalk has challenges because of the filming going on. I talked with them about it, but they're gonna try and see if there's a way that they can work around it to participate as well. But I just, it, it'd be really good to get Asbury as bright and cheerful for the holidays as possible. So that's the, the goal here. Um, any business that wants to sign up, it's really easy. Just call the chamber office, 732-775-7676, or email me at info at asburyparkchamber.com and just say, we wanna participate. There's nothing more, I don't need any more information than the business name and that you're in. <laughs> so that's it. Um, and again, happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next month. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Let's see anyone. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Public participation portion is now closed. We're now on to the minutes. I have the executive and regular meeting minutes of November 13, 2024 meeting. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to consent agenda resolutions. All matters listed on the consent agenda are, are presented collectively to the City Council and will be considered for approval with one vote. These matters are considered to be routine in nature and there will be no individual discussion of these items. If discussion is desired by one or more council members as to any particular item, then said item shall be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. On consent agenda tonight, we have resolutions 2024-493 through 2024-495. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council member Bez Anderson. Yes. Council member Chapman. Yes. Council member Clayton. Yes. Oh. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to individual resolutions. Our resolution 2024-496, resolution authorizing the payment of bills. Purchase order number 24-03232 is removed from the bill list. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. No. Resolution 2024-497, resolution authorizing payment for emergency traffic signal repairs needed at Cookman Avenue and Heck Street. Move it. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-498, resolution authorizing fiber cable installation at the new fire department headquarters. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-499, resolution authorizing a professional services contract with TNM Associates for design contract administration and inspection of traffic signal installation at Grand and Sunset Avenues. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. It has a question, but I'll make it more of a statement. In my foot bad, I didn't follow up on it. Uh, talked to Jason from TNM and I was a little bit disappointed in the prices and he said he was going to try to get them down. Did we hear anything from him? Yeah. On this project alone? No, not on this one. No. So I, I, I do remember the conversation. I thought it was for future projects, but no, I don't believe that's, I believe that's a bill, sir. Do you want to I can table double check. But do you want to yeah. table, table. Do you want to table it? I don't know. It's a bad intersection. Two weeks. I don't to table. What's two? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Move to table. Is there a second to table? Oh, second. Thank you. So, to table 2024 499, Councilmember Bez Anderson. To yes. table to the December 11th meeting. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024 499, table to the December 11th meeting. Resolution 2024-500, resolution authorizing a contract for the disposal of leaves during the fall season. Move it. Second. Second. 
Councilmember Bose yes. Anderson. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We have an additional resolution to tonight's agenda. It's a resolution 2024-490, resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Asbury Park, authorizing the City of Asbury Park to enter into a redeveloper agreement with 614 Cookman LLC for a project in the property located at 614 Cookman Avenue, identified on the city tax map as block 2404, lot six. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Present. Okay. We're now on to adjournment. <laughs> Don't have anything else? Yes, that's Move to adjourn. That's our intention. That's a present. Second to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Everybody can have tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving.